do you like international mayhem and mystery? Oh, we coming with it today. It's Monday, and time to get messy. You're listening to Pickering Unplugged. Welcome. Don't adjust your dial. Welcome, everyone, to the Low Fi Poly Sci Podcast. I'm your host, Michael Pickering. That's right. Low Fi's and low fidelity, low quality, in your face, messy as can be, global news show. And today we're going a bit off script because. Well, we can. It's the last week of season two, so why not reintroduce a bit of Messy Mondays? That's right, we're going to mention just a few headlines that we'll likely come back to later in the week, but today, we're focusing on a story that brings attention to the international crime syndicates of the world, or countries, and we're talking about drug trafficking for the show. But some quick news, fresh off that press for you. The United Nations Secretary General, Antonio Gutierrez of Portugal, Well, it looks like he wants to stay around for a second term. We'll see how that goes and how other countries react to this later in the week. And in North Korea, their leader, Kim Jong-un, gets a new title. And it's not Supreme Leader Chancellor of the United Federations of Democratic North Korean States. Oh no, it's nothing like that. We'll come back to it another day, though, and talk this more. An update in Ethiopia, which built a dam blocking the flow of the Nile to Sudan and Egypt. We've talked about this before. But Sudan and Egypt and Ethiopia were in talks, are in talks. Talks are not going well. Egypt and Sudan are still pissed off. But we'll update you on that later in the week as well. And finally, Armenia and Azerbaijan are having talks in Russia. And we'll see what's going down lately with that, since the Nagorno-Karabakh region conflict seems to be over, um, and what these two countries are up to now. So keep your eyes open and ears to the ground, Lo-Fi Nation, because lots going down this week. But today... On this Monday, the 11th of January, 2021, we're going to talk about the international drug trade. And this topic I decided to do based on an article I found. Um, Source, BBC, Middle East section, the headline, Hezbollah denies any role in production of amphetamines. So let's lay down the background of this story and then explore the global implications. So in June of last year in Italy, authorities seized a shipment of amphetamine pills That was 14 tons. It's estimated that it's about 30,000 pounds of pills. That's so many amphetamine pills that you don't count them. You weigh them. Although the article does say that it was, and I quote, some 85 million, end quote. The word some indicates that ain't nobody counting this. That's just a guesstimation. But you know what else is a guesstimation? That it's estimated to be worth 1.2 billion U.S. dollars. That's a lot. Like, for real, I cannot begin to downplay the size or the worth of this shipment. In the past year, we've talked about drug shipments being found all over the world, with net worths in the millions of dollars. This one was worth over a billion. And the implications of this? That this shipment would have been dispersed not only in Italy, not only in Europe, but worldwide. I mean, this was a global shipment of amphetamines caught at its initial stage of distribution. That's major. Now, the ship carrying these drugs originated from a Syrian port, the country of Syria. And at first, Italian authorities stated that they believed that the Islamic State, or also known as ISIS, was responsible for the production and shipping. However, this theory has been thrown out pretty much, because the reality is there's no way that ISIS has the capability to produce manufacture, or ship such a massive amount of drugs. It's simply not possible. The scope of this operation in order to do this is massive. And ISIS has been on the decline for well over a year before this shipment was actually seized. So if not ISIS, who else would be sending these drugs out of the port in Syria? Well, the Syrian government, perhaps. It's been long thought that the Assad regime has been using narcotics profits to pay for their civil war. And shipments of amphetamines have been found and seized all over the Middle East and the Mediterranean. And lots of these shipments, they come from Syrian ports. Now, if Syria is profiting off the drug trade, we may ask, and I think rightfully so, where in the hell, in a war-torn country in the middle of a 10-year civil war, with militaries from all over the world having a presence, number one, 
where is the Assad regime growing the materials needed to create this drug? Number two, where are the factories used to manufacture this drug? And three, why haven't we found these places yet? And the likely answer is probably the correct one in this case. The reason is because they aren't in that country. Although the article does state that some people do believe that some of these factories might exist in Assad-controlled areas. But here entered the theory of this story and how Lebanon and Hezbollah are linked to the shipment being found in Italy. So you see the theory goes like this. And remember, theory. Very important to state that off the top. So the theory goes, Iran, Hezbollah, and Syria are all profiting off the drug trade here. Iran is under heavy sanctions from the U.S. and therefore needs black market currencies to help sustain their government and economy. Hence, they help finance Hezbollah, who then grows the material needed in Lebanon and manufactures the drug there. Then, Hezbollah and Iran being Syrian Assad regime allies, Hezbollah sends the drugs into Syria, where the Assad regime takes care of sending it out from their ports to anywhere it needs to go in the world. So the theory goes... Iran finances, Hezbollah produces, Syria traffics. And that's the beginning of the drug trade in this case, and how you get over $1 billion worth of amphetamines seized in Italy. But remember, this is a theory, or at least a theory in this context. If authorities have proof of this connection, we don't know about it yet because it's still under investigation. And the Italian authorities have since corrected themselves and stated they don't believe ISIS is behind this shipment, um, basically because of the scope of the operation. But also, the Italian authorities haven't really spoken much more than that. Okay then, next question. We may ask, who's talking about Hezbollah so much so that their leader comes out and directly denies these allegations? How do we get this article on the BBC? And I know you may already be guessing it. European countries, the U.S., and Israel have, and in the words of the article, for a long time suspected them of profiting off of the drug trade. So that's where these ideas are coming from. European countries, the U.S., and Israel. Now, Hezbollah states that they've been in contact with the, Ita with the Italians and have been told by their authorities that they are actually investigating ISIS, the Italian Mafia, and the Russian Mafia, a.k.a. the Brafa. Um, and furthermore, that these claims about Hezbollah's involvement are nothing more than Western propaganda aimed at making the group look bad. And could this be true? Of course it could. All countries engage in foreign propaganda aimed at furthering their own agenda and foreign policy. Of course. Though it seems unlikely that ISIS is producing or manufacturing such a large quantity, they could play a role in the distribution network, no doubt. And do the Mafia and the Bratva have the power and the resources to do something like this huge shipment? Of course they do. Though that doesn't mean they're to blame here. And you will notice that there are no Mafia or Bratva hashtags connected to this cast, because, well, frankly... I'm not going to throw that kind of shade their way and then claim hashtag mafia, hashtag brafa, hashtag nice knowing you lo-fi nation. Oh, I think not. Uh-uh. Anyway, the overall reality is at this point, these are only theories because we're not privileged to the internal findings of any investigation going on about any international drug trafficking incident. Simple as that. The other overarching reality is that no... One group is responsible for the financing, production, manufacturing, and distribution of over $1.2 billion worth of amphetamines. This situation is, in the most literal sense of the words, an international drug trafficking operation. It's international because it takes multiple players in multiple countries all working together to get these things done. And quite importantly here, they got caught. And the implication behind that is that in reality, it takes more than what we're talking about here or what this article is talking about to actually do these things successfully. And let's be frank, amphetamines don't all originate from the Middle East, please. This stuff is produced and distributed from all over the world in any place where people want to make a living from money off of this industry. 
I mean, the financing comes from across the globe. It's produced and manufactured all over the world. And it's distributed all over the entire planet. So when I come across a headline that throws shade at one or two or even three groups as being responsible for such a massive shipment of narcotics, well, I automatically think that that headline is extremely narrow in scope and fundamentally not acknowledging the true enormity of the international drug trafficking in the world today. I mean, the illegal economy of the world is incredibly fascinating to me because it provides a fuller picture of what's going on in the world today. That famous question we're always talking about. It accounts for how so many things happen, how certain events and people are able to finance and accomplish major things that we see in countries. Anywhere from military coups, separatist rebellions, dictators staying in power, and so, so much more. But remember, lo-fi listener, when trying to connect the dots on the illegal international economy and global events, these headlines and stories do not exist in a vacuum. They are, just like regular international economic transactions and events, they're all connected. That's how last year, for instance, you have one of Brazil's biggest gang leaders and drug traffickers escape from prison and then found in Mozambique, a story we covered last April. So keep your eyes open and ears to the ground. There's already lots going down in 2021. And that, my friends, is Pickering Unplugged on this messy Monday. Stay tuned for tomorrow's episode of Tuesday's Top 10, and we'll be going off script all week long for this last week of season two. So stick around with us. And always remember that lo-fi poli is more than just me. It's the we that we be. Thanks for listening. Stay safe, wash those hands, and I'll see you on the next episode of the Lo-Fi Poli-Sci Podcast. Pickering, signing off.